Hello, hello, photo builders. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Because today we're going to learn how to use photo pills from a beginner point of view until you become real pros in using photo pills. My goal today is to give you everything you need to know which pill to take, to know which tool to, uh, to use, depending on the question you have, depending on the photo you want to plan or you want to calculate the depth of field or you want to any question you have in order to get the photo you want, you can answer your photo pills. And my goal today is to help you really understand which pill to take, which tool to, you, uh, tool to use in each different case, because each pill, each tool in photo pills has a different purpose. Uh, but we'll see today. What we'll see today? We'll see today. We'll start with an overview of the photo pills app. I'll show you uh, what are the most important uh, pills or tools in, in the app. I'll explain you how to use them, and then we'll spend quite a bit, quite a bit of um, time in the planner, using the planner, planning photos, uh, planning photos involving the sun, the strong light, the moon, the Milky Way. And because this is a, it's a live session, please, if you have questions, leave a comment in the chat, because I always, uh, as always, we have Sandra Vallaure with us, the great and only Sandra Vallaro with us, and she will be helping me collecting your uh, questions so I can answer them. And please, please, please ask questions because if I can help you today, it will make a big difference when you're back trying to use photo pills. So, ladies and gentlemen, I see that there are people from all over the world. Thank you so much for joining me again. Let's get it started. What I'll do is I'll share my screen with you guys and see let me know let me know in the comments if you see a photo pill screen now everything should be uh okay and running okay from a beginner point of view well when you download photo pills the first thing you need to do is to forget about the app just you know install enable the widgets you know that the widgets is like a shortcut that most of the apps most of apps have in order to give you a real key information without having to go to the app to check it. And in front of us, we have a few, quite, uh, quite a few widgets. And on iOS, let me show you the widgets. The widgets is this uh, thing here you see on the screen. Uh, every time I'm going to point something in the screen, you'll see the recording from QuickTime. Don't, don't pay attention to it. So these are the widgets. The widgets are like a shortcut of the key information for the location you are and the date you are. So if you want to know what time is sunset today, you don't need to go to the photo pills app. You can just use the widgets. And as you see here in Madrid, Spain, the sun is, is uh, has already set at 6.50 uh, p.m. The sun will rise tomorrow at 8.07. And then we have the golden hour, blue hour, astronomical twilights, the moon rising moon set uh, times, the phase, and also the galactic center visibility and the night the number of hours of the night with no moon, eight hours and 54 minutes, which is are great. If you want to enable them, all you have to do in iOS, you just do a long press on an empty area in the screen. I have a lot. And from here, you can tap on the plus at the top. And you just need to look for the photo pills up here. And here you have all the widgets which you can drag and drop, and you add you can add them uh, to the menu. Super important, enable the widgets, guys. Enable the widgets on Android. The same thing, more or less. Just go to an empty area of the screen, do a long press, and if you do it, you'll see uh, the widgets button pop up. Tap on widgets, look for uh, photo pills, and drag and drop the widgets you you like on your home screen. This way, you'll have all this key information, sun, the moon, the Milky Way, for the location you are, and there you are, uh, like this, in a, just a few swipes. So let's go back to photo pills, because only the widgets is worth downloading the app. So it's so, so common to forget what time is sunset today. OK, let's go to the widgets and check it. What time is the Milky Way visible tonight? Or the galactic center? Go to the widgets. You don't need to go to uh, the app for checking the information for the location you are and there you are four simple things uh, like that. Second step, if you go to my staff menu, you swap the screen 
or tap on the My Stack menu and tap on Settings here. For you guys that are in the US, you use not the metric system, you use the feet and miles. So tap on units and you can change to Imperial, which is the feet and mile and uh, inches uh, system, something that you may want to do uh, from the UK and uh, the US. And yeah, after these two things, I think we can go and go and see an overview of, of the app. And as always, I say, I say always that you need to forget about the app. You need to be a photographer first. I mean, uh, with this, I mean that uh, you want to learn a tool. You need to have a goal first. So you need to think about, okay, I want to shoot a sunrise next Saturday. Where should I go? What time? Where the sun is setting? Because when you set a goal, when you have a motivation, for example, shooting a sunrise next weekend here in Madrid or wherever you live, then you will have questions. What time is sunset? Where the sun will be rising? And then is when you can go to photo pills and find the answers to these questions. Don't try to go to the app and master everything. Don't try to go to the app and master everything because you can lost. It's better to you know divide and conquer. If you want to photograph a sunrise or a sunset, learn about planning sunrise and sunset. It's very simple. You want to photograph the Milky Way, learn how to you know plan the Milky Way first, and little by little you learn how to use all the tools in uh, photo pills and make the most of the app. Because believe me, when you start planning your photos, a new door of creativity opens in front of you. So because you have the power to take a location and start brainstorming images. What about the Milky Way there? What about the sun there? What about, what about the, the, the moon there? Then you can, when you have ideas, then you'll have the, the motivation to plan them. And planning means finding the right shooting spot and the right shooting date and time, the photo that you want to take, to take actually happens. Great, and if you lack of ideas, you can go to my stuff, and you need inspiration and tap on awards here. And here you'll find photos that the Fratos community you guys are sharing with us today via the submit button. At the bottom, you can submit your photos too. And well, very inspiring images. You know, you can think about photos with the star trails, nice long exposures, you know, sunrise or sunset, with empty filters, composition, composition with the moon. But this is not loading. Let's see oh, if it loads. Hmm. Yes, here it is. Composition with the moon or the Milky Way. Let's see. Here we have it. So, inspiration, awards. You want to participate? Submit your photos, please, to the real submit button. So, let's say that you're inspired, but you know, don't know where to start. And this is very important because I know that you forget everything I'll explain you running today <laughs> in a second. So, I want to make sure that you know how to use our uh, academy section to find the information you need to solve the problems you have. And here, there are a few buttons that are key. For example, the most important one is the, for me is the how to articles, because imagine that you want to plan or take a photo of the Milky Way, but you don't know, you forgot how to plan the Milky Way. Just go to the articles, go to the Milky Way photography guide, and all the guides, you know, the moon photography guide, the Milky Way, the star trails, all the guides will guide you to nail your shot, your Milky Way shot in this, in this case. You, they will give you inspiration, but they will also help you learn how to plan the Milky Way, all the gear you need to photograph the Milky Way, and all the camera settings you need uh, to photograph the Milky Way, and even a few videos on how to post-process the Milky Way afterwards. And inspiration, of course, Milky Way photos. So really, Relax, I'll be running. You can slow me down afterwards if you have to rewatch this from home. On YouTube allows you to slow me down. But really, these how to articles are the starting point if you're lost and you don't know where to start in photo pills. Just think about the type of photo you want to take. Go and read the guide, and the guy will guide you, you know, the whole process because our goal is not to help you plan the shots, our goal is to help you nail your shots. And of course, if you want to give us five stars in the app store and google play you have the rate the app button here uh, which is something that makes us super super happy if you do it so thank you in advance for your support okay okay now it's time to go to the pills man 
So I gave you inspirations, where to find inspiration, where to find the knowledge, the education you need to move forward. And now I'll do an overview of all the pills, all the tools, all the tools uh, that the pills has, or almost the almost the all of them, the most important ones, I may say. Okay, as you see at the top, we have the plan. The plan is the one we'll see uh, later. Uh, is the tool we use to plan all our photos from home, all our uh, photo expeditions, you know, our expeditions to Namibia, to Faroe Islands, to uh, Dolomites, to the US. Uh, we're planning a very cool expedition uh, to Faroe Islands and to uh, the US next uh, this year too. The US for the annual solar eclipse so is going to be uh, pretty cool. So we use the app to, to plan the planner. We use the planner to plan all the, our photos because we love you know planning photos from home and travel to catch them. Even in places that we've never been to, it's super, super fun. So we'll see the planner in detail today, but you don't always need to use the planner. We use the planner when we are at home. We'll use the map view when we'll plan the shot from home comfortably. But sometimes you are in the field and you want to know information about where the sun will be rising or what's the next uh, supermoon or where the moon will be rising or where the Milky Way will be tonight or where is the Polaris so I can you know, plan my photo uh, while I'm scouting uh, before sunset. In these situations, when you're in the field and you want to uh, get quick information of what's on what's going to happen next, I'm going to I'm using always use the sun pill, the moon pill, the AR pill, or the meteor shower pills. Of course, the sun is about uh, sunlight information uh, for the location you are and the you are. The moon uh, is information about the moon, and the night AR is for uh, planning the Milky Way and star trails, and the meteor showers for planning meteor showers. So from the, in the sun pill, what you have is at the top the date. Now it's the current date and time here at the top. And then I have the uh, location I am in Madrid. Uh, and all the information is based on my GPS location and the date and time. So I have here all the information from midnight to midnight about the moon, the graphic center visibility times, sunrise and sunsets, uh, light, golden hour, blue hour, and the twilights, which is pretty cool. But when you're in the field and you want to know where the sun will be rising, because so you have the, the sunrise and sunset here at the top, the times, but you want to visualize where, we'll use the AR button. AR button. Why? Because the AR will show uh, you in the, on the reality where the sun is at the moment. So I have the date and time here. And right now, if, I'm, uh, if I go out of the building, I'm going to see the sun below the horizon because it's already set. And so the sun was setting here and it was rising here. And my studio is a bit of a mess because I'm packing up for an expedition to the Canadian Rockies with Rachel Jones and Anthony Collier. So here we have the horizon, sunrise, and the sun path. Uh, to see the sunset. The cool thing about the ARB is that you can visualize if there is a building or a hill here. You can visualize if the sun will be hidden by the hill or, or the building. You swipe your finger from right to left, you move time backwards, uh, forwards, from left to right, you move time backwards. So it's impossible to miss where the sun will be uh, setting or rising. And if there is an obstacle, you'll see it. Huh? You'll see how the sun is hiding behind the, uh, um, the obstacle. You can just swipe your finger on the screen and change the time. If you go to the AR and see that the picture of the sun is not on the real sun, you need to tap on the calibration button. This is very useful when you're scouting during the you know, midday time. So if you tap on calibration, you can calibrate the view. You can swipe, you can drag the, the picture of the sun and place it right on the real sun. Imagine that the sun is the camera, the real sun is the camera. and uh, you can drag it here and then tap on confirm calibration. And now what you'll see is more or less, is more accurate than, than before. I always, always, always calibrate my AR view above all when I'm planning for the Milky Way uh, during daytime, because I really want to make sure that what I'm seeing through the night, the night AR button, 
is uh, is going to be uh, real. It's gonna it's gonna happen. Of course, if the issues with AR views, if you have problems with AR views, try to you know do the eight figure. Don't have magnets on your phone or no cases with magnets or metallic or metallic uh, parts. And also use the calibration button in the AR to calibrate your views. That's my advice. For the moon, it's the same. You want to know where the moon will be rising tomorrow. Just tap on the moon. Here I have the information for today. You can change the date by tapping the arrows next to the moon on the top. So we go to tomorrow, February 16th. Moonrise is at 5.15 AM. And if I tap on the night AR, I visualize where the moon is rising. So there, in this direction, which is very good. Let me clean the moon by changing the time. So here will be the moon rising. We have the moon phase. And here you have the date and time where for the moon position. Cool. And I think I like, I like about the moon field is the calendar. Why the calendar? Because the calendar gives me all the faces of the moon. So I'm used this a lot for planning our uh, uh, expeditions, Milky Way expeditions. So we usually plan them around new moon uh, to avoid the moon. Sometimes we, we plan them to have moon to help us uh, to help us with the foreground. So you know that when you have the moon above the horizon at night, uh, the moonlight will help you get more detail in the foreground. So you have a big mountain, it's better to plan the Milky Way almost, you know, to have the moon to provide light from the side on the mountain so you can capture detail on the mountain, mountain too. This is just an idea. Also, if you swipe your the calendar, you'll see the super moons. The super moons are these yellow circumferences here, you know, uh, so this year we have two super moons on August 1st and August uh, 31st. So on August we have two full moons and uh, which are two super moons. And the super moon is the full moon that's closest to Earth. So it appears a little bit larger than usual. You wanna know how larger it will be? Tap on the super moon here on the calendar and look for the full moon and it says, Full moon 7.6 percent bigger than the moon's uh, mean size. So this is because it's a super moon; it's a bit larger because it appears a bit larger, of course, because it's a bit closer to our. Awesome. Let's see if we have questions here. Uh, could you remind us how to be at the location and figure out the best time to view the Milky Way from where you are? Yes, we'll see that. We'll see that. Uh, Afterwards, when I'll check the night yard pill and then the planner will cover Milky Way planning today too. Okay, that's for the moon calendar. Let's go to the night yard pill. Again, if you're in the field photographing sunset and you want to stay to photograph star trails or to photograph the Milky Way, you want, you, you want to plan your shot while you see, so you have your subject and you can understand where the Milky Way will be or the star, tra tra the star trails pattern you'll get depending on the shooting location, we use the night. Uh, AR. Night AR, it goes directly to the night AR view. We have the horizon here, the polaris. The stars moving, they are just telling us, you know, the sense of rotation of the stars. The blue circumferences are telling me the star trails pattern you'll get if I'm framing to the polaris. You know, that we'll get the circumpolar image here. The stars appear to rotate around the polaris. You frame east or west. You frame the celestial equator. The celestial equator is where the stars appear to travel in a straight line. And you have this beautiful uh, pattern of star trails, or straight line on the equator, and then the stars will diverge away from the equator. Pretty cool. And here in the Northern Hemisphere, where I am, if you frame south, you'll have arches describing arches. The stars will describe arches above the landscape. So planning star trails is super easy. You just need to tap on the night AR, visualize on your phone in the direction you want to shoot, and you visualize the star trails pattern you'll get. And then you, all you have to do is to walk around and you know until you get your subject in a position you like uh, relative to the pattern. For example, you want 
the to photograph a silicon polar image above your subject, then you have to place your subject below the polaris under the uh, north star, which is this dot here. In the southern hemisphere, well, you have the south celestial pole, you can use it. You know that you don't have polaris, but you have this uh, help here to understand where to frame uh, to get the silicon polar image in the south celestial pole. The structure's pattern and the shapes all depend on the location, the latitude you are. Everything can change a lot, so I invite you to use it. And then what we have here, we have also the moon, moon path, because you know at night you want to know where the moon is at all time. And where's the moon now? Uh, the moon is below the horizon right now. We have the date and time here. Over there we have the moon. And now the polar uh, the Milky Way is right here. If I swipe the time bar, and the time bar not the screen of the middle of the AR, I can swipe it until, until I get the where's the core? Okay, the core of the Milky Way is this orange dot here. And as you see today, the moon is on the core, which is uh, not very nice. Uh, but by swapping your time on the AR view, you visualize the position of the, of the Milky Way at all time. Also notice that the background color changes. So it goes from, you know, daytime is yellow, then we have the golden hour, blue hour, and then when it's crystal clear, like it is, is when it's nighttime. And now you can see the Milky Way. So at uh, 6 38 a.m., tomorrow morning, from the position a.m., the Milky Way will be in this position here. And at this time of the year, in the Northern Hemisphere, we can put around the Milky Way pretty low in the sky. It's a great time for panoramas of the Milky Way. A tip here, if you don't like to shoot it tomorrow because we have the moon, you just can tap on the sides. You tap on the side on the AR, and you jump the time, uh, the, you jump one day uh, forward. You tap, type, if you type on the right, you jump one day forward, you tap on the left, usually on one day backwards. So let me tap on the couple of taps <coughs> to jump to the 19th. And on the 19th, well, the moon is already below the horizon, so I have a very thin moon, almost new moon. So if I want to shoot this shot, if, if, I, if I was in a dark sky location, I would go on the 19th, not today. Right? If you double tap on the center, you set the date to today. And now, right, tomorrow morning, we have the moon of the core, so it's not really uh, a great shot. So again, let me repeat it super fast. Wanna you're in the field in front of your subject, you want to understand where the Milky Way is gonna be. Just tap on the night AR, swipe your finger to change the time until it's night time, and then you'll visualize where the Milky Way is. And based on the Milky Way position, you can choose your shooting spot based on the composition you want, of course. And here you'll have the shooting time, 6, 10, a, a. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Moving forward first, uh, any questions on uh, these pills we've just covered, Sun, Moon, and Night ER? Let me know in the comments. Perfect. Uh, let's continue. Let's continue with the spot stars, because talking about Milky Way, if you want to photograph Milky Way, you know that you can, you're forced to limit your exposure time. That is a exposure time or a maximum of exposure time you can use to prevent the stars from trailing in the frame. And for that, we, you, we created the spot stars calculator or the spot stars pill. And here all you have to do is to choose your camera, for example, full frame, like Nikon Z6, your uh, focal length, focal length, let's say uh, 24 mil, Length, uh, aperture 2.8, the declination of the stars, uh, leave it to zero. The declination of the stars, you know, the stars that are on the celestial equator, uh, this thing here, the stars that are in this, the celestial equator are, are the ones that are moving the faster, the fastest. So if you uh, set declination zero, you're telling photopills that you're capturing in your photo the stars on the equator. So photopills will make sure to give you a exposure time uh, that keeps the stars on the equator as pinpoints and not uh, and not trails. So I always leave 
the uh, um, declination to zero. And the uh, accuracy mode, I usually set it to default mode. Accurate mode is when you want to be, be very, very, very restrictive. You want to print, for example, your uh, your uh, Milky Way shot in a large format, then use an accurate mode, but you'll have just a few seconds to shoot the Milky Way. So leave it on default mode. And here, use the MPF rule, 10 seconds, 11 seconds, 12 seconds. Well, start with 10 seconds maybe, and then uh, push it to 10, 12. This is just a starting point for you guys to, to shoot it and take a test shot and check the, if you like the stars or not, or you want to push the exposure a little bit more up. If you use the uh, 500 rule, then 29 seconds for sure, you'll get star trails in your photo. So if you're new to photo Milky Way photography and you know what uh, exposure time you need to use, use the sport stars calculator and the NPF rule to understand what's the maximum exposure time. And given the aperture and your exposure time, then you need to decide the ISO, ISO you're going to use to get the histogram or the exposure right. Understood? That's the reason. One of the questions I get here is why there is no ISO here? Well, because this calculator has nothing to do with ISO. This calculator is all about getting the maximum exposure time you can shoot to keep uh, the stars are uh, pin pinpoint stars to prevent uh, star trails. Then you'll use the ISO, given the aperture and the uh, exposure time, to uh, nail your exposure. Uh, you want to set up the camera, you just tap on the, the camera name here at the top and you can set it up. There is a menu, you can type the name of your camera, you can uh, choose it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. More questions? No? Okay, let's continue. Meteor showers. Meteor showers, if you want to plan meteor showers, it's super easy. If you're in the field, actually we use the planner tool also to plan from home, but you want to understand, for example, what's the best, what, what are the best meteor showers this year? Just go to the pills menu, tap on the meteor shower pill. And here you have a lot of information, as always, the date at the top with your location. Okay, my mom is calling. Uh, I think I'll, I'll try to ooh, focus. I think it was. Sorry, ma'am, I'm busy now. <laughs> okay, uh, meteor showers. Uh, date and time at the top, the location you are, and it gives you the current information for the date and location you are. It gives you, uh, for example, today, no meteors. So what's the most important meteor shower in 2023? Tap on calendar, calendar, and here you have a calendar uh, with the most important meteor showers and an energy bar next to each meteor shower. This energy bar is telling you how powerful or how good that meteor shower will be. And for 2023, you see that the quadrantids was very good. The Lilids is okay, it was great. The base ones are the Perseids and the Gemids. Also, the Delta Quadrids and the Leonids are not too bad, but quadrantids, Lilids, uh, Perseids, and uh, Geminids are the, the best ones. And this energy bar takes, takes into account the moon phase and also the position of the radiant and uh, the location. You know that the radiant of a meteor shower is the radiant point, is the point in the sky where meteors appear to originate. Um, and if the radiant is below the horizon, then uh, it's possible that you get less meteors. But for example, you want to understand all the information about the Geminates, tap on the Geminates here, and you go to uh, the Gemini sheet and here you have but yeah, pretty cool information, more information about the, this meteor shower. And if you want to select it, you see that the, you know, the moon phase is 5.6% only. Just tap on here, on this arrow here to select it and see all the information of the Geminids, which or the big date of the Geminids on December 15th uh, on the main screen, on the info tab. And here I have uh, for Madrid, well, not for Madrid because we have light pollution here, but for the location I am, so 115 meteors per hour expected. The peak time and date is uh, December 15th, 2023 at 1.31 a.m. And here we have at the bottom, we have a graph 
showing me the intensity of meteors throughout the night and the position of the radiant of the uh, Geminids and the moon. You see that the moon will be below the horizon for the whole night. So more or less from 7 p.m. till 7 a.m. You can shoot the whole night, you know, that for meteor showers. We advise you to keep shooting the whole night nonstop to capture as much as many meteors as possible. And you say that the most important thing in uh, meteor showers is you forget about the radiant, maybe just find a cool composition with a nice subject and then just shoot, 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 use a wide angle lens and shoot, 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 and, and pray to capture a few meteors in the frame. It's more important uh, the composition, you know, foreground and your subject. And uh, for sure, you capture a few, a few meteors in the, in the frame. That's my advice. So I, if you want to visualize when you're in the field where the radiant of the meteor shower will be, you can tap on the night AR, night AR. And you need to look for the Gemini's radiant. This is the radiant point here in the sky, the radiant where the meteors appear to originate. You can frame the radiant, but you frame away from the radiant, you might get larger meteors. So framing 20, 30, 40 degrees away from the radiant, you might get larger meteors. You want to build one of these images, a composite image where you see all the meteors converging to the radiant. You need to frame the radiant, put the frame, the radiant in the in the in the frame, at least for the base image. So you, then you can uh, build uh, that composite image with all the radians, uh, all the meteors pointing to the radiant point of the meteor shower. Okay, great, seven thirty, and we're going fast, halfway done in the first half half part of the of the meteors of the. <laughs> Of this class. Questions? Any question here? Sandra? No? Where is the night AR? I see. Well, the night AR is in the pills menu. You'll find all the pills in the pills uh, menu. Night AR here in the pills. You can miss it. You have all the pills under the pills menu. And then within the, the different pills, you might find the AR button. You know, AR button, super important for the pills because it allows us to show the information of the sun, moon, and Milky Way, star trails, media showers on the reality. So it, you understand where the sun, the moon, and Milky Way will be. So it's easier to plan your shots. OK, more pills. Been covering uh, four great pills to plan your shots when you're in the field. Let's see a few more pills we, we can use to answer all the kind of questions. For example, if you're shooting with an ND filter, you know that you need to calculate the equivalent exposure time. What exposure time you need to use when you're using an ND filter to get the exposure right? And for that, we have the exposure pill, the pills menu, exposure pill. And how does it work? Well, it works using the reprocity rule. And if you're a photographer, you should know that uh, what the reprocity rule is. Basically, you know that there is almost an infinite uh, number of combinations where you that, that, that will give you uh, an, uh, there is a, an infinite number of almost an infinite number of combination of the aperture, uh, shutter speed, and uh, ISO that will give you the same exposure. So uh, as the test settings, we use uh, the settings for the test shot, and then as equivalent settings, we change the things here the exposure, I exposure the the aperture and the ISO and the ND filter to calculate the shutter speed. You can decide to calculate other parameters, but for ND filters, just use the shutter speed because you need the shutter speed to uh, actually it's the shutter speed what you need to calculate. So how it works? Without the ND filter, you take a test shot that gives you a good exposure. So imagine that you took a taste shot at 5.6, one divided 200 seconds, and I saw 100. And you check the histogram, and you, you said, OK, that's the exposure is right. I like it, but I want to shoot a long exposure. I don't want to shoot it at 1 divided by 2 seconds, uh, 1 divided by 200 seconds. I want to shoot it at 1, 2, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, because I want to catch uh, the movement of the water, of running water, or the moving clouds in the photo. So for that, I'm going to use a, an ND filter. So I'll start trying with the same aperture, f5.6. 
5.6, the same, the same I also, so we know it's 100, and then I'm going to use, uh, let's say, a 10 stops and the filter, and the calculator is telling me that the shutter speed should be five seconds. So if I'm shooting at uh, f5.6, 100 ISO, and 10 stops and the filter using a filter in front of the lens, I need to shoot at five seconds to get the same exposure as the test settings, right? And if this exposure was right, then this exposure here will be right too. You want to, well, Rafa, I want to increase my exposure time. Okay, you can close the aperture here. You can play with these uh, settings. You can close the aperture, let's say to f8, and now you can shoot 10 seconds, right? It's all about managing uh, the camera settings uh, with this calculator to get the effect you want, the final effect you want in the photo using uh, uh, a thicker or a more dense and the filter or you know playing with ISO and uh, uh, aperture to get the shutter speed you need. I know it's a bit uh, confusing, but it is uh, simple. <laughs> it's simple. It's simple. It's simple. It's not that complicated. Take a day shot. Check the histogram. It looks fantastic. Awesome. Put the ND filter uh, 10 stops or the ND filter you have on front of the camera. Set the aperture you want to shoot and the ISO, and you'll get the shutter speed here. Set the settings, and you'll get the same histogram, the same exposure time. Uh, the, the same setting, the same, the same histogram, the same exposure than the test setting. So the exposure will be right too. It's, uh, it's great. It's great. I have done in the uh, asking me if this the exposure pill is not for night shooting too, but just for asking. No, you can you can use it uh, uh, for night shooting too. You for night you can just get rid of the of the ND filter uh, because this is repository law. It doesn't matter the situation. You can uh, use it. For example, imagine that you want to shoot a long exposure at night to capture detail in the foreground. Well. How can you uh, really quickly figure out the exposure time you need to use to get the, the exposure right? Well, you could do it by, via trial and error. You could just shoot you know, for, for five minutes and then check the histogram, or for 10 minutes and then check the histogram. But you could do it the smart way. You could do it fast. You could just take a quick test shot to get the exposure right. Let's say you shoot at f2.8 and a super high ISO. Well, should a speed, uh, short, a fast short speed, let's say five seconds, and then a high ISO, ISO, right? You keep taking these test shots until you get the uh, exposure right, because you take two or three, four with different ISOs and short speeds, and uh, you'll get the exposure right at some point. And then you introduce the settings here as a test settings. So imagine that with these settings, you got the exposure right. But of course, you don't want to shoot at 10,000 ISO. Uh, you want to shoot at 100 ISO. So if I lower down the ISO, what's the shutter speed I need to shoot? At 2.8. I'm going to keep the same aperture. Well, the calculator is telling me that uh, at 2.8, uh, ISO 100, if I shoot for 8 minutes and 20 seconds, I'm going to get the same exposure as the test settings. And if this exposure was right, the histogram was right, then this histogram here will be right too. If this is too much for you, you could increase a bit, you know, ISO to 200, maybe, and only shoot for 4 minutes, 10 seconds. So it's uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, Sandra is telling me that the Philly Laporta, what's the difference between the test settings and the equivalent settings? Well, the test settings is the settings you use for the test shot. You, with your camera, you take a test shot to get the histogram right. And then you introduce them as the test settings here. And then the equivalent settings will be the settings for the final photo. In this case, F2.8, 200, and 4 minutes and uh, 10 seconds. Why? Because if you shoot at 5 seconds at you know, ISO 10,000, 10, well, more noise, more problems in the image. 
in this case. Along exposure for the foreground, with these settings, we'll give you more detail and less noise in the, in the image. And I have another question here from JustCap777. What is the E value, e, e, EV is the exposure value in yellow at the bottom. It gives you, the exposure value is a value, this exposure value here, it gives you a value of the amount of light over the exposure of the photo. So any given combination of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO will give you a different, uh, will give you an exposure value. For example, for this combination here, the exposure value is minus 5.97. And the, the equivalent settings will give you the same number, is the same number. That's the reason uh, this uh, combination here will produce the same exposure. Exposure value is uh, the amount of light you're capturing, is a number that represents the exposure, the exposure uh, of the photo, of the scene you're photographing. Okay, more depth of field. I know, guys, that you know how to calculate the depth of field already. But if you want to calculate the depth of field or the hyperfocal distance, well, you can use the depth of field tool here, the depth of field table, and the hyperfocal table. Well, the hyperfocal table is super simple. You just tap on the on the table, and you suppose you know what's the hyperfocal distance, right? Does anybody don't know what's the hyperfocal distance? Well, hyperfocal distance is just the distance that has a very special property is that if you focus at something that's behind the focal distance, at a larger distance than the focal, then infinity will be in focus or acceptably sharp. If you focus at something that's uh, before in front of the focal distance, it's at a shorter distance, then infinity will be out of focus. And these are many landscape photographers, you know, uh, and astrophotographers, night sky photographers, or, you know, uh, architecture photographers, use hyperfocal distance to to make sure that they are focusing on something that's behind the focal distance to so maximize depth of field in the in the photo and you can calculate this number using the hyperfocal table you choose your camera and then based on the aperture so for example 2.8 and uh, uh, the focal length you get 2.33 meters in this case hyperfocal distance in brackets you have the units is meters this means that if I'm focusing at 2.33, uh, I'm going to get in focus or acceptably sharp from half of this distance till infinity. If I'm focusing at 3 meters, then I lose a bit of sharpness in the foreground, but infinity will still be acceptably sharp. But if, if I'm focusing at 2 meters, so at the shorter distance than the hyperfocal, then infinity will be out of focus. That's the key when you're photographing the sky or the moon or the landscape. You, you want to, you know, you want to only shoot one exposure, one photo. That focal distance gives you a hint where to focus uh, to maximize depth of field in the photo. And you can also calculate it with the depth of field calculator here. Depth of field. That's the typical depth of field calculator. You have the camera at the top. You can choose it. You can set the, you know focal length, aperture, and where you're focusing, and you get the depth of field information on a table. You have the hyperfocal distance on the top, and then the depth of field far limit and near limit. So this means that if I'm focusing at uh, 6 meters, I'm going to get uh, in focus from 3819 till uh, from 49.54 meters. So from 3.19 until uh, almost 50 meters in focus. Why? Well, because the hyperfocal distance is 682. It's, and I'm focusing at six meters, it's a short distance. If I'm focusing at, let's say seven meters, you'll see the difference here, very important. <coughs> uh, then the depth of field far limit is infinity. So I'm gonna get acceptably sharp from 346 till infinity. You know, this is the property of the hyperfocal distance. And the good thing, uh, I think I love about this calculator here is that you can tap on the night, uh, on the AR button at the bottom and visualize the depth of field information on the floor. So I'm focusing at seven meters, seven meters. I have the hyperfocal distance here. All these lines are supposed to be drawn on the floor. 
and I'm going to get in focus from 346 uh, meters till infinity. So the uh, depth of field will be pretty, pretty uh, deep, no? a very deep depth of, depth of field. So use the uh, AR button, guys. It's a super cool way to visualize what's going to be, uh, to visualize information you're calculating on the uh, reality. OK. Depth of field, I'm going fast here because I want to go to the planner in a few seconds and to start planning shots from home. OK, we've seen the depth of field, the hyperfocal uh, table. Depth of, field, depth of field table is the same, but for depth of field, so I'm not going to explain it. The last one I'm going to explain here is the field of view, field of view to visualize the frame to visualize the photo without taking the camera out of your camera back. You set the camera, the focal length, where you're focusing, and you're shooting portrait on our landscape. And here you're having a table, the angle of view or the depth of view, or, the, or the field of view in meters, right? Is the frame you'll get. The most important, you have uh, an image of the frame you'll get, right? But if you tap on the, on the AR button, again, you can visualize what will be in the photo. You can visualize the frame using that uh, the focal length and that camera. So you just you can just tap on the screen and place the frame uh, where you want. And you can visualize, OK, okay, what will be in the frame and outside the frame. So, very quickly, the field of view pill allows you to visualize. It's like a viewfinder. Just set the focal line you want to use and use the AR to visualize the, the photo, visualize the frame. So quickly understand what will be in the frame and outside the frame, what will be in the photo and outside the photo. OK, this is a quick overview of, of the most important tools here. Let's go to the planner. Sandra, any question down there? Guys, any question down there before we go to the photo pills planner and we start planning photos? OK. You guys are proficient. You're, you're in proficiency <laughs> level now in photo pills. Great, planner. We use the planner, this pill here, to plan the photos from home for any location on Earth. And to plan a photo, well, you only need to uh, three things, actually. You need to know how to move the repin to the location you want to plan, start planning shots. Imagine that you want to travel to Menorca and, you know, in, uh, in July and you want to plan, or next week you want to be in Menorca and you want to know where the sun is rising to plan a shot. Well, you need to place the repin in the area you're going to be uh, shooting. Then you need to learn how to change the time using the time bar. And then you need to understand for the repeat position and the select date and time with the time bar where the sun, the moon, and the Milky Way or the eclipses or uh, the meteor showers will be based on the map information and the top panel here. Top panels are key. They will give you super cool information. And very quickly, from right to left, from left to right, the first panel is to plan shadows. I'm not, I'm not using the panel that much. So you want to plan a shadow of a building, uh, length of a shadow, you can use this panel. Second panel is super key because this panel allows us to switch on and off the black pin and the black pin will give us, uh, uh, will help us understand the terrain and how high is the, the moon, the Milky Way, or uh, the sun above the ground level where the black pin is. So if you place the black pin on your subject, then you on the panel, you'll have very relevant information. We'll see it yeah, as an example in, in a minute. Then we have the information on the sun and moon position, the azimuth and elevation. The azimuth, you know, that is the angle of the sun to the position. Uh, the, the, the angle measured from north to the position of the sun. By the way, here on the map, you have a few lines. The thin one is telling me where the sun is for the selected date and time. The, the thick yellow line is sunrise, thick orange line, sunset. Light blue, thick line is the moonrise. 
moon set the dark thick blue line and the moon position is this blue line here the thin the thin lines are the current position of the sun and moon and the thick ones are the rise and set directions super key so the azimuth is the angle measured from north to the position of the sun so 120 is this angle here and 276 for the moon is this angle here perfect this panel is also telling me the elevation. This is the angle measured from uh, the horizon to the center of the moon. So we understand how high the moon or the sun are in the sky. And then we have the moon phase. Next panel, super important. It's giving me the moon rise and moon set directions, sunrise and sunset directions. And as you see, the colors on the panel of the arrows match the colors of the lines on the map. So the sun is rising at 7.46 AM in the direction of the thick yellow line and it's setting in direction of the thick orange line at 6 18 uh, yeah, 6 11 pm and this is for <laughs> february 8 right 2023 this is the further slide date and the moon uh, set in direction of the dark blue line the thick dark blue line at 8 9 20 uh, pm 9 20 am and it's uh, rising in what it rose at 8.51 p.m. in the direction of the light dark blue, the light uh, thick blue line here, right? Easy. Then we have, you want to know the twilights? We have the date, <coughs> the twilights, the morning and the evening twilights here. You want to know the golden hour times and blue hour times? You have them here. And then you have two panels of the Milky Way we'll give you, that are giving you the galactic center visibility times for the repping position and the day you are the position of the galactic center. And then we have two panels on meteor showers and the eclipses. Right? That's for the panels. Quick overview. Perfect. So going back, going back to uh, a very important question. Actually, Sandra is uh, reminding me to explain how to enable the lines on the map. Well, you can, on the map, you have two key buttons, the plus and the layers button. If you tap on the layers, and again, the layers is the one that's here at the corner, next to the plus on the map, tap on layers. Here you can change the camera to a camera mode, which we won't see today. You can change the map type. You can use the map tools. These are very useful to, I will see today, to plan your depth of field and your field of view, your frame with the map. And you can decide what focal length you want to use, what aperture you want to use, depending on depth of field values. And then you want to switch on and off layers or info layers on the map. You need to tap on the eye icons next to uh, each layer. For example, if I want to switch off the moon layer, I just tap on the uh, moon uh, on the eye icon next to moon layer. If I want to switch it, sheet, uh, if I want to switch on the milk oil layer, I just tap on the eye next to the milk oil layer. Very important. But I'm going to leave it now for only with the sun and the moon layers. How do I access to the layers? Again, the map settings button here, the layers button on the map. Great. We have a, a very interesting question on the chat from uh, Robert Shimon. True or magnetic north, which do I use? If you go back, uh, Robert, to the My Stuff menu, and you go to settings. Here you can decide if you want the, to be referred to the true north or to the magnetic north. This is important for you guys that live in the you know uh, latitudes above you know fifty something. Uh, yeah, true north, magnetic north from the main from my staff menu settings, and here you can change them. I'm going to keep it to the north because I am in Madrid. Perfect. Great, great, great. I see that we have questions on how to move the red pin and change the date. We're going to cover it now. Well, to move the red pin, super easy. First thing you need to know to plan a shot is to move the red pin. How you can move it? You can just forget about the pin, go to another country and do a long press on the map and the pin will be placed where you're tapping and holding. 
you could just uh, use the load button here at the bottom. Load and save are very important buttons. Save is for saving your plans. So when you have a, a plan, you can save it uh, in your to-do list, or you can save the red pin position as a point of interest or as a location. So you can start planning shots afterwards in that location. But if you tap on load, well, on load, you have the search bar here where you can type a name. For example, I'm going to type the name of Favarich. Lighthouse in my mount, and the uh, red pin is placed in the Favarich Lighthouse in Menorca. So again, tap on load, and type the name of a name, uh, of a place on top of it, and the red pin will be placed on that uh, place. You can also load a point of it, a point of interest, a plan, a latitude, longitude, or a geotag photo. This is very important, guys. If you scout during the day and you take photos with your phone and you allow your phone to record the GPS coordinates on the photos, then you can load uh, that photos from your camera roll here, and the red pin will be placed in those coordinates, in the coordinates the photo uh, was taken. So that's another big tip. Uh, another way to move the red pin, let's see, let's see. Very important here, the plus on the map, plus button, plus. If you want to place the red pin where you are, tap on plus here on the map. And the first uh, icon here, if you tap it, the red pin is placed where you are and you can start planning your shots. Super, super important. Tap on plus. And uh, I see a question here. I don't have the plus button on the map. Maybe it's because you have, uh, well, you should have it. <laughs> you should have it. Send us an email, you should have the plus button. If you don't have it, it's because you're not in the planner. Uh, you're in, in, you're in the plans here. Get out of, or you're in the point of interest. Get out of this, go to build menu, go to planner, and you'll have the plus button for sure. OK. More things you can do. Well, here. You can, the second button here, next to the GPS, you can tap it, and a white cross appears, and you can just navigate the map and tap on the white cross to place the red pin. Again, you can recover previous positions of the pin by this button, undo and the redo button, button. Very, very, very cool. So you can just recover positions. I'll go back to Menorca to see how easy it is. You do it on press and you place it and you're back to Menorca. Great. Another important button in the plus button, so important, is the uh, this arrow head here. Why is it important? Because it shows where you are at all time. This is my position. This is the position of the red pin. Now, if you walk, the blue circle here will follow you because this is you. Uh, this way you'll know when you are at the red pin position. Let me do an experiment here. If I tap on the GPS button, the first one here, you see that the red pin is placed where this blue circle is, where I am. So if you want to know where to go or where the red pin is, just switch on your position on the map by using the arrow, this one here. You switch it on. And then you walk until you get the blue circle right at the bottom of the red pin. Cool. Now we're going to switch off because it consumes battery. And I'll go back to my Menorca, do a long press and place the red pin. Perfect tool. So let's imagine that you want to, ooh, what happened here? Let's imagine that you want to uh, go to, a, you're applying to a holiday to Menorca and you want to plan a next uh, Saturday a, a, more, a sunrise or a sunset shot here on the island. First step. Place the red pin on the island. You know how to do it now. You know you know how to move the red pin. Second step, 
is to set the date to next Saturday, right? To set the shooting day. So the easiest way to do it is by do a double tap on the time bar to set the date to today and now. If you do a double tap, two taps on the time bar, you set the date to today and now. And now you can just swipe the time bar to the left until it says Saturday. See here, it says Saturday. Perfect, I have the shooting date. Now on the map, I have my sunrise, sunset direction, moonrise and moonset. Because I'm planning the sun, I'm gonna switch off the moon. How do I do it? Tap on the layers button here. And uh, tap on the eye next to the moon to switch it off. Go back to the map. And now I only have the sun information. So next Saturday, this is on uh, February 18th, the sun is rising at 7.33 a.m. in the direction of this thick yellow line and is setting at 6.22 p.m. in the direction of the thick orange line. So based on these two lines, I can decide where to go to photograph it. And here is super important to have or to know as many cool locations as possible. The more locations you know, the better. Because what you'll do is to move the red pin to different locations and check if that location works for sunrise or sunset. For example, if I go to Favarich here, I know that, well, this location works pretty cool for uh, sunrise. Or if, if, if you don't want the, the sun in the frame, you could shoot from here and as the sun rises, you could get the light from the side on your uh, subject. So you can plan shots with the you know, sun in the frame or just you know based on the light direction you want, you choose your shooting spot. Pretty simple. For example, you want to shoot the sunset, you could go to another place here, pretty cool. Another lighthouse in, in uh, Artruch. If I do long press, I'm gonna place the, map, the pin on the map. And here I can photograph a cool sun. Sunset. This shot is pretty cool because the lines on the coast, the coast lines here guide guide to the lighthouse, and the sun it will be setting next to it. So it's a it's a very cool location. So planning sunrise and sunsets when you know the date is super simple. Just set the date using the time bar, and then based on the sunrise and sunset locations, you can choose where to go uh, to photograph it. The more powerful locations, you know, the better, because you can check all the locations very easily by moving the red pin on those locations and see the, the possible compositions. Let's say that here you want to, okay, you have your plan. So if on February 18th, 2023, at 6.30 p.m., you are at the red pin position, you'll be able to photograph the sun setting next to the uh, Artruch Lighthouse, which is a pretty cool shot. But you could keep planning, you could plan the, uh, the focal length on the map. How do you do it? Tap on the layers button again. You know, the layers button is super important. It's this button here, tap on the layers button. And on the map tools here, tap on FOV, field of view. And go back to the map. And now all I have to do is to introduce your camera settings and get the field of view on the map. For example, with the Nikon Z6 and a, a 300 mil is too much. Maybe I'll go, let's see, 24 mil, how it goes. Here, you can just drag this dot here, the dark circle here on the map. You can just decide the frame and decide the shooting. Uh, what will be in the photo and outside the photo based on the focal length you're using. It's pretty cool. I love this tool. I love it. <laughs> I really love it. It's a fantastic tool to visualize the, what will be in the frame and what will be outside the frame. And also you should in portrait or shoot in landscape here at the top. You can choose and shoot in portrait or in landscape mode. Easy. How, how can you switch it off? Tap on the map settings button again and switch it off, right? And I'll go back to the map. 
Great. Let's plan now. Oh, by the way, you all know the golden hour times for this location and this date. As I said, go to panel number five or six, and here you have the golden hour and blue hour times for the location you're planning your shot. So you want to arrive before golden hour, then if you have the golden hour, that should be there around you know, 5 46 p.m. Yeah. Great. This is how you can plan sunrise and sunset shots when you know the date. Uh, <clears throat> but for example, what happens if you know the shooting spot, but you don't know when the sun or the moon will be setting right where you want? Because there, is, there, there are two ways of planning a shot. When you know the date, you make the most of the day because you, the position of the sun, the moon, and the queen are given. But imagine that you want to be, let's say, and this is a very cool shot. Imagine that you want to shoot from here. Very cool and dangerous shot, by the way. <laughs> it's pretty, you want to shoot here, from here, and you want to get the sun rising next to Cavalleria Lighthouse. So I know my shooting spot, the ripping position. I know the photo I want. I want. I know that I want the sun rising next to the Cavalleria, Cavalleria, uh, Cavalleria Lighthouse. But I don't know the date and time it happens. How can I do it? Well, easy. Go to panel number two, tap on the button on top of the panel, on the panel, place the lap pin next to or where you want, for example, the sun to rise, just in front of the lighthouse. So you're telling photo pills, okay, I want the sun to be rising here. And now tap on the find button. On find, here at the bottom, you have find, AR, night AR, tap on find. And what do you want to find? You want to find a sun at azimuth and elevation or a moon at azimuth and elevation. In this case, a sun at azimuth and elevation. On Android, you only have sun and moon because actually we only use these two. Two, uh, two options, sun at azimuth and moon at azimuth. I have never used them. So on Android, we just implemented two. In this case, on iOS, tap on sun at azimuth and elevation. And now, just tell for pills the date range you want to look for results. So I'm going to start day. Start today looking for results in one year. So I'm telling for pills with the date range, look for possible shooting dates within this date range here. And next step is to tell photo pills, well, the azimuth and the elevation, the position of the sun I want in the photo. The azimuth is already set because I have the, red, the yellow pin is linked to the black pin. So it's pretty cool. This yellow area you see is the tolerance or error, is the plus minus two degrees. In this case, I'm gonna uh, narrow the tolerance because I cannot move that much from my shooting spot. So I'm gonna tap on numeric at the bottom. And I'm going to set it to maybe half a degree to be more accurate or more uh, precise. And actually, I'm going to put it more north. OK, something like this. Perfect. This dark area here is where the sun is never going to be. So never look for shots in these directions here. It's impossible. And next step is the elevation. For the elevation, in this case, it's super, it's super simple. Just set an elevation of zero degrees because I'm looking for a sunrise. If you want to change the tolerance, you can tap on numeric and change the tolerance from here. For the elevation, I always leave 0.5 degrees. So, yep, this is what I'm going to leave here. Perfecto. So, I'm telling for pills look for when the sun will be rising. Yeah, next to the Cavalleria Lighthouse within these dates. So tap on the search at the top, on the magnifying glass icon, and you get the dates. The sun will be within the search parameters next year. And as you see, the shot is happening on April and on August, end of August, early September, and mid-April here. So I'm going to go for the first one. Uh, this is just Tuesday, April 11th, 2023, at 7.14 a.m. 
going to tap on the result to see the plan. And as you see here, well, pretty close. The sun will be rising huge, very big, next to my lighthouse, which is pretty cool. It's what I want. So I know my shooting day. This is April 11, 2023 at 7.15 a.m. is my shooting time. So around half past six, I'll be there waiting for the sun to rise next to my uh, the tallest cliff or the highest cliff on Menorca, on the island. If you're wondering how big the sun will be compared to you know the, the land here, well, you have it here in brackets. On the top panel, you have the shooting distance. It's almost 20 kilometers and 19.4 kilometers. And in brackets, you have the size of the sun, 180 meters, which is huge. And if you want to see this size here, the apparent size on the map, well, tap on the map settings button, tap on the layers button, tap on the layers button, tap on the sun layer, and tap on show sun size. This way, you have the size of the sun on the map. So you can compare how big the sun will be versus your subject. In this case, I'm shooting super far away, so the lighthouse is super small. I'm not interested in lighthouse. I'm interested in photographing a big sun with a big, a large, a high cliff here at sunrise, which is pretty cool. How you can switch on your, the sun, the sun uh, size on the map? Map settings button or layers button here, here next to the plus, tap on the layers button, tap on the sun, and show uh, uh, sun size. Go back. And also, I'm going to go to the moon layer and switch on show moon size. So if you go to the moon layer, you can also see how, how big the, the sun, the moon will be on the map. Great. So we've seen two ways of planning sunrise and sunsets. One is when you know the date, very simple, based on the sunrise and set directions. Super, super cool, easy. And the second one is when you know the shooting date, when you know the shooting spot and the frame you want, and you know the position of the sun or the moon you want, uh, then you can use the find tool here at the bottom to plan your shot to find the date and time the sun or the moon will be right where you want it to be in the frame. And this is the power of uh, the power of the fine tool, the power of the fine tool. It's an amazing tool. OK, let's plan a, cool, a few shots uh, for the moon with buildings. Let's keep using the fine tool. Imagine I'm going to switch off, switch off the black pin. Imagine that I'm going to switch on, go to the map layers. I'm going to switch off the sun now because I'm going to plan the moon. So I'm going to switch on the moon layer here. Perfect. Imagine that you want to shoot the moon from here from the Macaret, which is a nice area to live. And you want to shoot the moon behind or with the top of with the center of the moon at the same height as the sand, as the top of the tip of the Favaris lighthouse. Why? Because you love the view, you love the frame, you love the photo. You want just to shoot a close-up of the lighthouse with the moon uh, centered with the top of the lighthouse. So what do you do? How do you do it? Well, we use the fine tool, but the first step is to place the red pin at the shooting spot. Second step is to place the black pin, tapping on the button on the top panel and drag it on the lighthouse like this. And third step is to use the find tool to find when the moon will be right where we want it to be. 
So tap on fine. Moon at azimuth and elevation. For the moon, I'm going to set a day range starting today, but two years because the moon is not that easy to predict. Uh, I think I went to, uh, to the wrong. I said moon at azimuth and elevation. Perfect. This is starting today into years. Perfect. As the azimuth. Well, the azimuth, I'm very restrictive here because I can move around because my shooting spot here allows me to move around. If I have multiple areas here to shoot, I'm going to use a, a larger tolerance than, than 0.5. To change the tolerance, again, tap on numeric and uh, set, for example, 2 degrees of tolerance so I can get a larger number of possible shooting dates. Perfect. And as the elevation, I'm going to use the numeric option here. Why? Because here I have the apparent height of the moon above the blue pin, which is the apparent height of the moon above the black pin. So if I set, introduce here the height of the uh, of the lighthouse, which is 28 meters, I'm telling for appeals to look for dates, the moon will be at 28 meters above the ground level of the black pin, which is, I'm telling for appeals to look for dates, the center of the moon will be at 28 meters, plus minus 5, 05, that tolerance, right? We'll have to fine tune the results afterwards because of this tolerance. Okay, I have it all. Tap on the search button at the top to get the possible dates and times. And here I have the dates and I also have the moon faces and in yellow and uh, the colors at the background are telling me the moon, uh, the natural light you'll have. Uh, so light blue is daytime. Oh, I selected light blue is daytime. Black is nighttime. Orange is golden hour. And then the blues are the twilights. So I'm going to check this full moon here. This is on uh, August 30th, 2023 at 8, uh, 27 p.m. It's golden hour. It's a pretty cool moon shot. So I'll select it and see if I <coughs> fine tune it. Perfect. I'll check if the moon is aligned or not with the lighthouse. Well, it's almost aligned, pretty cool. The moon height on the top panel is almost 18 meters, and I want it to be 29, 28. Remember, 28 is the height of the lighthouse, and I want to have it have the center of the moon at 28 meters above the ground level. So if you, if you do a long press on the time bar, you can change the time more uh, precisely. OK, change like this. You see that when I change the time, the moon changes its direction. So I'm going to place it to. Yeah, almost 28 meters. Well, it's almost a line. Awesome. I'm going to change a bit my shooting spot to align it a bit more. And I think I have it. Yeah. Guys, this is a pretty cool shot of the moon behind the lighthouse of Tavaric. Look at how big the moon is in brackets here, 58.7 meters, 58.7 meters. What's the height of the center of the moon relative to the ground level of my lighthouse? Well, moon height, 28.4 meters from black pin. This means that the center of the moon is at 28.4 meters above the ground level of the black pin, the ground level of the lighthouse. Remember that here, uh, Google doesn't provide the heights of the lighthouse. So if you place the, the black pin or the uh, red pin on a building, the height doesn't the height of the building is, is not taken into account. So here you have to imagine that the black pin is placed on the ground level, at the street level of, the, of your buildings. This is the reason you can compare the moon height. 28 
with the height of your building. In this case, the height of my building is 28 meters. The height of the center of the moon is 28 meters. So the height of the moon is the same as the height of the uh, cent uh, <coughs> height of the building. And this is my plan with a huge moon. Oh, almost you know, almost 60 meters. 58.7 meters. So this is my plan. If on uh, August 30th, 2023 at 8.27 p.m. I am at the right position, I'll be able to photograph the moon rise next to the Tavares Lighthouse with a huge moon, an awesome moon behind my lighthouse, <laughs> aligned with the top of the lighthouse, which is uh, fantastic. I said that that plan was in golden hour. So let's check the elevation of the sun. You know that the natural light is linked to the elevation of the sun. And golden hour occurs when the elevation of the sun, and you, here you have the elevation of the sun, is between 6 and minus 4 degrees. For minus 4 to minus 6 is blue hour. In this case, at the time of the shooting, of the photo, minus 1.90 degrees of elevation. This means that the sun is below the horizon, it's golden hour. Golden hour, it means that the moon will be powerful, yellow, and beautiful. And I'll be able to photograph in one single exposure, uh, get correctly exposed in one single exposure, both my foreground and the moon, which is awesome. So when you're playing the moon, always, always, always check the natural light, check this panel here, check the elevation of the sun, at the time of the shooting, so you understand if you can take the shot in a single exposure or you need to shoot a double exposure or if it's too dark, yeah, shoot the double exposure or shoot the silhouette of the moon or the your silhouette of your subject against the moon. Okay, questions here. We have a question. Uh, Michael Umana. Is it the same calculation shooting a subject from the street? And if I'm on a 10th floor of a building, shooting the same subject? No, it's not the same. Very good question. Very, very good question. You want to take into account uh, the height of a building, You're shooting from the top of a building, for example. You can tap on the more button here. You tap on more and then tap on altitude. And here you can set an offset. Or the, on the red pin, you can set here, for example, 20 meters, which is the offset of the height of, of the building you're shooting from. And this will take, uh, and this uh, offset will be taken into account in all the calculations. So, again, more at the bottom, uh, more here at the bottom. Action. No, more, oh, sorry, altitudes. And here you can change, you can put an offset. I'm going to delete it. Offset for the red pin and offset for the black pin. Or even if you have a better database of altitudes, you can use, oops, what happened here? And you can use a better uh, altitude information here for both pins. So you can set it manually. Very good question, man. Thank you. And yes, this is being recorded. Perfect. Uh, I see that somebody, Sally, is asking where to uh, switch on the black pin. Go to panel number two, this panel here. I know you have a button on the panel. Black pin. Perfect. OK, let's plan the field of view here or end the depth field because I can, I can keep planning my shot. I am not done. I have my shooting spot and they can die, which is great. But what about the focal length I'm going to use? What about will the, the moon will be in focus if I focus on my subject? If I focus on, my, on the lighthouse to get that sharp, will the moon be in focus? Well, we can answer both questions by using the depth field map tool. How do you switch on and off things on the map? Go to the layers button. In this case, I'm going to switch on the depth of field calculator on the map. On the map tools, depth of field, BOF. Go back to the map. And now I'll set 
the settings. I'm gonna go use the Nikon Z6, the focal length maybe gonna try 400 mil. Aperture, I'm gonna leave it at f8. I'm gonna be focusing on my subject, focus distance, black pin distance, because I have the black pin on my subject. So I'm telling for the pills, I'm gonna be focusing on my subject. I'm gonna be shooting on uh, landscape, and I'm gonna be uh, shooting in the direction of the black pin, align with black pin. So I align, I align my subject, I, my field of view with my subject. This is in landscape mode. I'm gonna try a portrait mode to get a close, a more close-up view of my subject. Cool. Maybe I'm gonna go to 500. Do you guys have 500? Yeah, I think it's better 500. Uh, well, with the 500 mil in a full frame, I'm gonna get uh, this frame here. And you see how big the moon will be compared to my frame. What will be in the frame? Pretty cool. So I think 500 is the focal length. What about the depth of field? If I'm focusing on my subject here, on the black pin, on my lighthouse, will the moon be in focus? Well, for that, we need to figure out where the, what's the hyperfocal distance. Because you know that oh, if I'm focusing at something that's behind the hyperfocal distance, then infinity will be acceptably sharp. And the good news is that the hyperfocal distance is here. It has these uh, three icons here. It's 1.04 kilometers. So long story short, if I'm focusing on uh, my subject, the lighthouse, I'm focusing on something that's behind that focal distance. So infinity will be acceptably sharp. Actually, I'm going to have acceptably sharp from almost 800 meters till infinity. So yeah, in one single shot, I'll be able to catch a detail also on the moon and get back sharp my subject. Very important. I love this tool. OK, OK, guys. More questions on moon planning? Yes? No? Yes? Because now I'm going to plan the next full moon, and then I'm going to plan the Milky Way. And we're going to end. <laughs> because now we, what we've seen is, how can you plan a moon and this is so powerful because you guys know so many locations, know so many cool subjects. Just decide different shooting spots. And when you choose a shooting spot, make sure that you're shooting from the east or from the west. Because this way you'll be able to find moon rises and moon sets that align with your subject. Because the moon rises in the east and sets in the west. Same for the sun. So look for locations in the east or in the west where you can see your subject that are far away. And then you can uh, so so you can use the find tool in Photopills to find when the sun or the moon will be right where you want to be in the frame. Okay, next one. Plan the next full moon. I'm gonna switch off the map tool here, the depth of field tool, and I'm gonna switch off my <coughs> the black pin. I'm gonna do a long press on the time bar to go back to normal uh, time, time bar length, so I can change the time faster. So I'm in Menorca, and I want to plan the next full moon. Let's see if I can find a cool shot here. I haven't tested before, so <laughs> we might not get one. <coughs> so how do you plan the next full moon? First, place the red pin in the area you want to be planning. In my case, is Menorca. Then next step is to set uh, the full moon date in the, using the time bar. And the easiest way to do it is by double tapping on the time bar to set the date to today and now. And now on panel number four, you have a picture of the moon. If you tap it once, you jump to the next important moon phase. If you double tap it, you jump backwards to the most important full moon phase. So, Tap it once and once and once until I get to the full moon date, which is on March 7th. Nice, I'll do it again. Tap once, once, once. Full moon date, March 7th. Perfect. Now that I have the full moon date, I know where the moon is rising and setting. And I can choose my shooting spots. 
actually here you see that the moon is rising aligned with the Cavalli lighthouse. So I could try to plan a shot here. Uh, from a spot that uh, the lighthouse is visible. How do you plan it? Well, because you know the moonrise direction, so you choose a spot where the moon is rising next to the lighthouse. Easy, right? I see the moon is rising here, so the moon will be moving above the lighthouse. Pretty cool. To plan it, more, I'm going to switch, zoom on the map again, and I'm going to go to panel number two and place the black pin on my lighthouse so I can understand how high the moon is above my lighthouse. And this is at 7.06 p.m. Okay, if I align the moon, do a press on the map, on the time bar to move time more Precisely, if I align the moon from that shooting spot, okay, here the moon height is 47 meters, it's pretty high. I want it lower. Let's say in this case, I want it at 28, the same height. Well, I like this shot. You know that the height of this lighthouse is 28 meters and I have the moon at the same height. But in this case, I don't, I don't want it aligned with the lighthouse. Why always align things with things? <laughs> Just. It's pretty cool to photograph this uh, lighthouse with the moon next to it. Actually, I could go further here and photograph the moon further away from the lighthouse if I want. Maybe it's too much. Maybe from here, right? Oops. Yes. I think this one is cool. I'm going to. Place the moon a bit higher by changing the time. Good. Yeah. Okay. This is my plan for my next full moon. <laughs> if on March 7th, 2023 at 7.03 p.m., I am at the red pin position, I'll be able to photograph the moon next to the full moon next to my lighthouse at a height almost at 20 meters. The size will be five meters because I'm closer now. I'm only uh, 500 meters plus uh, 50. So it's 550 meters, almost 60 meters. And the, the moon is not big, but big enough, in my opinion. It's pretty cool. You can see, you can compare the size here with the lighthouse. Well, it's the, in width, is almost the same size as the lighthouse tower, which is nice. The last thing I'll do is to check the natural light. Oh, fantastico. I love this light. Minus five. Sun elevation, minus five. It's blue hour. In blue hour, you, we can get the moon, you know, kind of pinky. If we're lucky, depending on the the particles in the atmosphere, you can get a pinky moon or a yellow moon. It's very nice. Above all, when the moon is below the, it's uh, not very high in the sky. So this is my shot. This is my shot. I'm not gonna plan the depot of field, uh, field of view because I wanna I wanna plan the Milky Way now. But the logic when you're applying the moon or the sun for a given date is to use the moonrise and moonset directions to find an initial shooting spot. And then you start fine tuning your shooting spot and your shooting time based on the position you want the moon or the sun to be relative to your subject. And for that, we use panel number two, super important panel. This panel gives me everything I need. The moon height above the ground level of the lab pin, so you, you can compare it with the height of your building, and the size in brackets, how big the moon or the sun will be. And you can compare it with your subject. Good. Questions uh, here, because now I'm switching to Milky Way planning to end this, uh, this class. And if you have more questions, I'm happy, happy to, to answer them. OK, milk way time. Let me drink a bit of tea. OK, OK, OK. What do you need to do to plan the milk way first? You know, you need to switch on the milk way layer. How do you do that? 
tap on the layers button. I don't know how many times I, I tapped the layers button. You guys don't remember this. I don't know what I'm going to do. Tap on the layers button and tap on the eye next to the Milky Way layer. Don't tap on the Milky Way because it does nothing. Tap on the eye next to the Milky Way layer, Milky Way layer to switch it on. I'm going to leave the moon layer on because I always need to know where the moon is when I'm playing the Milky Way. And I'll go back to the map. Great. Now I have the Milky Way information on the map. These circumferences here will help me understand the position of the Milky Way. If it's low in the sky or high or diagonal, it's pretty cool. Now you don't see the Milky Way on the map because it's daytime. Look at the time bar. It's daytime. If I go to nighttime, then the Milky Way appears. And also you see that for this date, the uh, moon is rising here. If I keep moving, time bar, there's a moment that a large dot appears on the Milky Way arch. This is the galactic center, the center of our galaxy. These and these larger dots here represent the, the core of the Milky Way. So you know where the brightest part of the Milky Way is at all time on the map. It's linked with the red pin using uh, by this white thick line you see here. The thinner white line show us the directions where the Milky Way arch is meeting the horizon. So the Milky Way appears above the horizon in this direction. It goes up as an arch and it dies in this direction uh, at the horizon too. Great. So for example, you wanted to shoot, which I, I recommend you because this is full moon. <laughs> uh, you see, this is the almost 99% 90, uh, uh, March the 8th, it's full moon. So not a good date for the Milky Way, I think. Well, you could shoot it with full moon. In this case, the moon is at our backs, our, at our back. So we'll go here and shoot from here. And you have, you have the, the moon uh, at our back, but Having a lighthouse here leading the foreground, I don't really need the, the, the full moon. Okay, let's plan shots here in uh, in flash, for example. If I double tap on the time bar, I'm gonna set the day to today and now. So when I'm planning a Milky Way, what I do is I'll set the date and I check what Milky Way composition I can get for that day. Usually I start planning the new moons of the year. Why? Because for a given month, you can shoot the same shot of the Milky Way. Every day, you can shoot the same shot of the Milky Way. The only thing that changes, for a given month, I mean, uh, only, the only thing that changes is the weather conditions or, and the moon phase, right? So in February, in January, in, in March, April, June, for a given month, you can shoot the same shots. And even for two months, you can shoot, shoot almost the same shots. So the Milky Way is very easy to predict and plan. And then you can just change the date based on the weather conditions, for example, or the moon conditions. So how do you plan the Milky Way? Here, I'm going to start for the next new moon. I'm going to plan the new Milky Way in the next new moon. And to do it, I'm going to go to the second Milky Way panel. Again, the first Milky Way panel is telling you the time the galactic center will be visible. So from 4, 32 AM, till 6.04 a.m. And this is for the selected date. This is February 15th, right? And on the map, you have the directions. I'm going to switch off the, the moon now because I want to show you the, the these gray lines you have on the map. The light gray line is telling me the direction where the galactic center will become visible. And the darker gray line, this one here, will tell me the direction where Milky Way becomes not visible because we're entering the day line. So at 4.32, the galactic center will be in the direction of the thick light gray line. And at 6.04, the galactic center will be in the direction of the darker gray line, right? So the galactic center is moving 
between these two lines here in this area. Great, I'm gonna switch on the moon again. Great, so if I go to the second Milky Way panel, there is a button, there's a, a picture of the Milky Way that helps me understand the position of the Milky Way in the sky. So as you see, the Milky Way is pretty low in the sky. The arch of the Milky Way is pretty close to the largest circumference. This means that the Milky Way is pretty low in the sky. If you want to double check it, you can use the night AR and imagine that you are at the right pin position you use the night AR here and you imagine that you are at the right position, you visualize the position of the Milky Way. As you see, we have the moon, the core, and the Milky Way, as you see, is pretty low in the sky. This is the horizon. And here we have a beautiful arch of the Milky Way. If I change the time here by swiping the time of uh, the screen, the map updates too. The map updates. Great. So today is not a very good day because the moon is, is next to the my core. I don't like it. So what I do, I'll check the next new moon, the next new moon. How can I set easily the next new moon using the four pills? Well, tap on the Milky Way icon on the top panel. If you tap here, time will jump to the next new moon. If you double tap, time or date will jump to the previous new moon. So double tap on the time bar to set the date to the day now and tap on the icon of the Milky Way on the panel to set the next new moon, which is on February 20th. So I don't need to worry about the moon. I'll swipe the time. By the way, if you want to shoot a panel of the thinner part of the Milky Way, you can just do like this and shoot from here. That's an option. You're shooting a panorama of the thinner part of the Milky Way uh, above the Hawaii Lighthouse. But if you want to shoot a panel with the galactic center in the frame, you need to shoot it later when the galactic center is above the horizon, like this. And you need to shoot it from the other side. And from this spot, yeah, I've been planning this, I planned this shot a thousand times, I think. You have the guiding line of the road and the Milky Way arching above my lighthouse. Actually, I can shoot from here, top of the hill. It's a pretty cool shot. Now, as I said, if I change the date, every day I can shoot the same shot. Every day in March, in February, every day. The only thing that changes, weather conditions and the moon. Every day I can shoot the same shot. This is the reason I like to plan for a location I've never been. I like to plan uh, shots for the whole, all the new moons throughout the year. So I know every month what type of photography I can I can shoot in that specific shot. So again, <clears throat> well, and when you have planned the shot, I forgot to mention it, you can save it. You tap on save here at the bottom, you can save it, you can save a plan and type a name, Favarich. Uh, Favarich, Milky Way panel, you can save it in your to-do list. And then afterwards, if you want to load it, you can load it here, load plan, and you can load it from your database, right? Cool. Great, so in uh, February and in March, and again, if I swipe the time bar super fast, you can change the date super fast, and you can check the different possible compositions. You can shoot the pan this panel, I think almost uh, until uh, May, June. But in Menorca, what other compositions uh, I can find? Well, I could forget about the Hawaii's Lighthouse. Imagine that I want to plan, I repeat the thing, I want to plan, I want to shoot a panorama of the Milky Way next new moon. Double tap on the time bar to set the date to today and tap on the icon on the top panel to set the date to the next new moon. You just swipe the time to get the position of the Milky Way you want and then you 
can just check other locations. For example, go to the Caballeria Lighthouse to shoot another shot. Or I could go to Naveta de Estudons, which is a very good, a very cool ancient chamber here. Uh, we photograph it uh, during our photo field scans every year. We come here and photograph this panorama here, but it, it's in May. So I'll show you in May if I tap on the icon on the top panel until the new moon in May. So this is the shot we can get in May here from this location. Pretty cool. With the Milky Way a bit higher in the sky. Very, very nice. So once you know the position of the Milky Way you want, you can change and check different different locations. to we'll go and photograph our favorite uh, hut here. Let me find it. Favorite hut where you are. I think I won't find it now. Ah, uh, here we are. Yes. Mm, ah, this one. Oh, yep. I could shoot it. The Milky Way arching above our favorite hut here. So easy Milky Way. Given a date, you know, you decide the position you want, and then you can check different subjects until you find a cool shot. You want to, for example, you want to shoot a vertical Milky Way. You know that here in the northern hemisphere, you cannot you cannot shoot it uh, until end of uh, July. So I'll go to the new moon in July. I'll make the Milky Way completely vertical like this. This is the Milky Way is completely vertical. To come to look at the top picture, completely vertical Milky Way. Uh, if I tap on the night AR, you'll see that the Milky Way is. Uh, completely vertical, which is awesome. So I know that on this date, on July 18th, the Milky Way is vertical in this direction. So I can, okay, if I want to photograph a vertical Milky Way with the hat, I can go here. What time? At 2.51 a.m. on uh, July the 7th. Or I could go to another cool subject we have here, Spondent Jill. And if I go here, you can photograph the Milky Way completely vertical with this natural arch here, which we also photograph during the photo scan. Not for the Milky Way, because in uh, uh, May is not a good month for the for Spondent Jill. But here in July, uh, September, uh, July, August, September, October, even November, you can get the pretty cool shot of the Milky Way in the Spondent Jill. So, so, so. Questions. Storms Gallery has a question. Can you show your field of view now to see if you capture the Milky Way? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. I can uh, actually. I'll go for the panel of Favarich to show you. For example, shooting a spot. Uh, I want a panel, so in July is not possible. I need to come back to today. Double tap on the time bar to set the date today. And I'll tap on the icon of the Milky Way to March. So imagine that you've planned this shot and you want to check the field of view. You tap on the layers button here. Awesome. Switch on the on the map tools, the field of view tool. And here uh, you need to introduce the settings. Angle of view, let's say that you want to shoot a panel with a 24 mil. Uh, and uh, import remote. If you shoot, and here you see what you'll be, what will be in the frame and outside the frame. For panels, to know how many photos you need to take, I usually do this. I just drag this dark circle here. This is going to be my first photo, right? 
um, because I want to give space here on the west of the Milky Way and the horizon. So I'm going to be shooting this frame here. And then I remember where I place this, uh, where this uh, site of the angle of view is. And what I'll do is I move it. So one shot, two shots, three shots, four shots, five shots, six shots, seven shots, eight shots. So I think between six, uh, eight, and nine shots is good for this panel. Uh, and yeah, and this is how I figure out how many how many uh, shots you can uh, you need to take for uh, a panorama. And again, if I tap on the night AR, you see the position of the Milky Way is below in the sky. Uh, this panorama, panorama is, uh, is amazing. It's a great, great location. Now yeah, we have in more Of course, everything I'm teaching you today is useful for any location on Earth. You need, all you need to do is to follow the same uh, uh, follow the same uh, steps to plan the Milky Way. OK, I'm going to switch off the layers. So now it's time for Q&A questions, because we're reaching two hours, almost two hours. So guys, folks, if you need uh, more help, questions, any questions I haven't answered, because I know I have left some stuff out of this class. But I think we've covered uh, most of it, most of photo pills. We've been, we've seen the widgets, we've seen the settings, we've seen the mental reality views, how to calibrate them. We've seen uh, the main important tools to use when you're in the field. Uh, you know, use the sun pill, use the uh, moon pill, the night AR pill, and the mid shot pill to plan your shot when you're, when you're in the field. You can use the exposure calculator um, to work out the equivalent of exposure times when you're using ND filters or uh, when shooting a long exposure at night. Then you have the depth of field tools, the field of build tool. Super important, the words, to see the work, the imagination the community has. Imagine, uh, you know, planning is key uh, to get these shots, it's, it's, uh, you know, and it maximizes the the, the photos you, you'll be taking. And if you get lost, you need help, you can come and rewatch this class that will be available afterwards uh, when it ends uh, on our YouTube channel. But again, the academy section, super important. Go to the how to articles and you want to learn how to photograph, for example. You want to plan, learn how to plan anything. You have our super detailed uh photography planning guide it's amazing i think it has more than four four hundred pages we explain in detail all the cases all the possible cases you can use photos to plan for us you want to learn how to plan the moon moon photography guide you have everything here you can download it as a an ebook if you want but here you have all the steps inspiration all the essentials to know when you're planning, why you know the shooting distance uh, affects the size of the moon compared to your subject, why the focal length only affects the size of the moon compared to your frame, and all you need, even a very detailed how to plan. This is a very cool shot, by the way, uh, in Favarich. We planned a very similar one today. Uh, this one was taken by Herman Marquez, the developer of Photopills. When he was shooting at that time, <laughs> You are shooting, uh, now he's coding all day long. Mm -hmm. Questions, questions? OK, let me see. Let me see the questions. When you plan a shot for you to be in a certain spot, how do you find that spot for yourself to stand? Well, scouting. That's super important, scouting. You go scout because you know your subject. You find that subject, and then you start the scouting, and you find uh, the different compositions. For example, for this lighthouse here, well, with the maps, this is simple because uh, he has the level. It's super simple to see if uh, I have a clean view of the lighthouse. But yeah, yeah, I always go on the terrain, and we scout 
and find uh, the best spots because you know applying the moon is tricky it's not uh that is it there might be a cable in the video so it's better to go and scout it for sure and find good uh great places to stand for great compositions more questions rob Gary. Uh, As we don't have elevation coordinates on Google based uh, map based, will it will just affect the time of sunrise? Okay, you want to know that the sunrise and sunset times on the planet are given at the horizon level. At the horizon level. I'm gonna switch off the Milky Way and switch on the sun, switch off the moon. This is that horizon level. You have a mountain here, for example, in Smarkadal. Uh, we have uh, a mountain here. What you need to do is to place the black pin on the mountain and then let's say you're shooting from here. You can see when the, whether the mountain will hide or not the sun. So you can quickly figure out when the sun will be appearing behind the mountain. For example, from this shooting spot at uh, 7.41 a.m., the mountain is clearly hiding the sun. You see that the sun line is, is dashed now. And the sun height on the panel is minus 48 meters. So the sun is below the horizon. The center of the sun is below the mountain. But if I move, move time forward, there is a moment the, the sun will be above the mountain. It will come like this. So when the sun height or the moon height is zero here, it's, it's, it means that the center of the sun or the moon is at the same height as the mountain. So the Lapini uh, helps me understand when the sun or the moon will appear behind the mountain. Just by using the top panel, and by uh, using the, you know, changing the time and seeing when the sun or the moon will be appearing behind the mountain. Uh, Doc Baldwin, uh, should you adjust your starting height if you are in the mountains? No, if you're in the mountains, you just place the red pin on the shooting spot and then you use the black pin to understand the terrain. Or you can also go to the map settings here on the layers and change the map type for a terrain, for example, terrain. And you can clearly see, you know, where the mountains are. You see where the, the, the possible obstacles are and you can just move the red pin, I move the black pin on your uh, azimuth line to visualize if there is something blocking the, uh, the sun, the center of the sun. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. Okay, okay, more questions. I don't see more questions in the chat. Uh, it's almost two hours. It's almost two hours. I think it's time to say goodbye again. I want to remind you, if you want to help us rate us rate the app on the app store go, go play five stars please and if you don't know where to start go to the how to articles and just read the guide that covers the topic you want to photograph it can be the moon the milky way star trails we have a guide for almost everything meteor showers long exposure photography with filters uh, depth of field exposure in photography sunrise sunset nice photography blowout drone photography we have a guide for almost everything and we're still writing guides. So now, yeah, Thomas, <laughs> it's time to call mama. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll call my mom now. She might be worried. Ah, that's cool, that's cool. Okay, jokes apart, it's true, I need to call my mom. So thank you so much everybody for uh, bearing with me. It's been amazing, 262 people live. After two hours of photo pills uh, class, it's been uh, very intense. 
please watch this class maybe afterwards. It will be available on YouTube. Uh, maybe watch watch it, uh, you know, in a slow pace so you can understand me better. Uh, but the trick is, you know, the articles, take advantage of them, uh, do watch the classes, watch our videos, and above all, imagine photos, imagine photos. Everything starts with your imagination. You know, take a location you like, brainstorm, think about different possible shots with photo pills who will help you plan them with the sun, moon, milk way, star trails, and uh, just enjoy. So as always, it's time to say goodbye. If you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday with another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye-bye, guys. Love you, and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sandra, for your help. See you tomorrow in the Spanish class. Bye-bye, guys. Love you.